flavor, flavor. Yeah, boy. Hey, yo, check one, two. This is Flavor Flav in the building for the better agency. Nicholas wants everyone to know how they need to listen to the truth that Nick and Preston are giving them. Flavor Flav's got me all out right now. You heard me? So hold it down and keep making it a better agency. All right? <laughs> Welcome back to The Better Podcast. My name is Nicholas Ayers. He is Preston, Preston. Schmidley. I'm going to get that right one. You got the, the Schmidley right. You, you, you failed on the easy part, though. Yeah, it's unique Preston. New York. Unique New York. How now, brown cow? I'll get it you right. Go. You did that one good. I did that one perfect. How much wood? What is it? What is it? What is it? I-A-O-A? E-I-E-I-O? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, it's always the most simple things. And you're a pretty Jason simple Cassism. guy. So... Uh, it's always the simple things that always bog you down. But on this episode of the Better Podcast, we have this dude. You ever seen a Viking in real life? You know what a Viking looks like? When I picture a Viking, a Nordic man just just yoked, just looking like the son of Zeus, sitting there with his with his Zeus juice, and he just drinks it and he gets all swole. I, I what is the, Zeus juice? That's what Eric Solji drinks. Dude, I, he just he just looks like a freaking savage. He he does look like he just got off the set of Viking. He looks like he just got off a boat from Greenland. And uh, <laughs> other than that, what most people don't know about Eric is he is one of the better, most underrated, underheard from agency owners mm. in the entire country. Uh, Eric got to start on the life side. And he still <laughs> has a large foot in the life world. But he also owns a PNC agency in Sacramento, California, uh, my old stomping grounds. And over the years, I've got to know Eric pretty well. Uh, he's just a fun guy to hang around, very smart. He's got an agency. He's got a couple of locations now with his agency. He's got, I want to say, 13, 14 different employees. Hmm. Uh, so he's rocking and rolling. He's got a good thing going uh, there in Northern California. And, you know, he came on to uh, our, our, our podcast here, and he was talking about just – the failure of implementation, mm. not being able to actually implement. And I think this is the great Achilles heel for our agent, yeah. for, for our industry, not just our industry, but just every industry, but especially in the insurance business, because there's so many things for people to get distracted with. There's so many avenues for them to go in. Do I do this? Do I do that? Do I go, do I do Facebook ads. Do I do Google ads? Do I, you know, do I uh, run remote? Do I run multiple, you know, CSR salespeople? Do I, what do I do? right? There's all these things. Do I use this program, that program? Eric was the victim of his own lack of implementation, his own desire to want to have results, but not actually implement. He'll tell you this, this to himself. And, you know, for someone who's so talented and so, so gifted and, and just so smart, you know, he would admit that he just didn't have the time sometimes yeah. to, to do these things. He, he would get excited about certain pieces of software or certain certain programs or just whatever but he just he couldn't actually implement he'd take one step forward but then he'd feel like that's all he that's all the progress he could make and you know i'm, I'm reading a book right now preston and i know you know you give me a hard time now for reading um but well, I'm, reading I'm proud a book. of you yeah well you should be but i'm reading a book right now in fact i have it right here i'm gonna give it a little book plug the hmm. ultimate sales machine by Chet Holmes. And I was reading this and he talks about pig headed discipline and the ability to, to see your way through things through sheer pig headed discipline. And what Eric has been able to, I think, accomplish mm. these last few months since he's been on better agency, since he's kind of made some changes in his agency is he's developed that pig headed discipline that he's going to get something done, that he's not just going to be satisfied with having, you know, a, a, a line item on his, on his account, you know, expense report for this program or that program or this or that, but he's actually going to start to see results from those programs because he's going to start using them. He's going to start putting in the, the work and the, and everything needed to actually implement. So really super proud of him, but, you know, take, you know, talk to us a little bit, Preston, about what it's like and what you see with agents and, and their, and, and the challenge of implementation. I agree with you on the pig headed uh, implementation. I mean, failure comes in fragments, right? It's slow and it, it's, it's an erosion. It's, there's, there's rarely ever, you know, if you, if you ask somebody who didn't make it, 
um, you know, let's say, cause, cause you and I both know for scratch agents, it's what, there's a night, a 10% survival rate for two years less. I think it's, nine, I think it's uh, less than 8% survive. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's call it 92% uh, die. They don't, there's no one moment where, you know, I mean, obviously 92% at scale, some of them might've been in a car accident or something, but it's like, generally it's like failure doesn't happen in one small incident like one isolated incident it's it's a it's eroded day by day by day until one day you arrive and you realize the account's negative one day you realize you know the carrier pulled the appointment one day you realize but that that had been happening right it, failure comes in in fragments and so um i agree because it's like it's in those small moments um, where you have a lot of success one of, one of the biggest things that i was told and this applies to your body it applies to your, the way that you spend your time is that, and I'll just use this in the, in the sense of time. Um, every day you wake up, it's, it's, you know, your life choices are essentially like making deposits or withdrawals from a bank account of time. Okay. We'll call it a time account. And so essentially you make good choices consistently. You're making deposits, deposits, deposits. Life will reward you with an interest. Right. And eventually if you're making withdrawal, 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 just like in a bank account, eventually the bank calls in the loan. Right. And, and I think that for a lot of people, that final moment of failure where they finally feel it is just when life called in the loan. It said, no, you've made a lot of bad decisions. We have to take this away from you. And the cool thing is Eric has just recognized that, you know, I just need to make small deposits every day to have a massive change in my quality of life. Right. And, and, you know, I, I recognize that in my own life, you know, it's over a few, took only a few years to be able to make a lot of cool things come true. Um, I think that consistency will always be key. Uh, that's the hard part of life. That's the hard part of growing an agency, right? Um, I have a lot of respect for Eric in that capacity because it's not, there's nothing sexy about consistent small actions. You know, it's easy to celebrate the big win, but what most people don't see is all of the struggles and all the everyday stuff that wasn't fun that went into having that moment where you're holding the trophy, you know? And uh, he's really mastered that. And, that. and that's why he's earned it. He came out to <clears throat> Arizona uh, not that long ago. And this is the type mm. of person that he is. Came out to Arizona a couple weeks ago. Uh, he said, you know what? I just want to fly out there for the day. I want to take uh, as much time as I can with you and with Will, our, our co-partner here at Better Agency. And he said, I just want you guys to push me. Just, I want to get on the bike. I want to be at the top of the hill and I just want you to push me down the hill. Just, just like a little mom, Smart. like a mommy Eagle dropping a baby out of the nest. I just wanted to, I said, Eric, you know, we could do this on zoom. We could, we could do this by email. We could do this a number of different ways. He goes, Nope. I want to get out of the office. I'm going to fly there. I'm going to sit down with you. I'm going to pay you whatever is needed to do that. And I'm just, because I, I know that once I get the momentum, I'm not going to stop. And mm -hmm. that's where he's been. And so it's been really cool. So, we're really excited to have Eric on today's podcast. Better Agency uh, is the proud sponsor of the Better Podcast. So if you are looking for more ways to automate your agency, automate your communications, communicate more with prospects, leads, and customers, then you need to give Better Agency the shot it deserves. Go to www.betteragency.io. I almost said .com. It's not .com. www.betteragency.io and start your trial today. It's 14 days. It's going to cost you a buck. Surely you can invest a buck into your success. So you can't even get uh, a pack of gum for that anymore. No, you really can't. <laughs> not at all. So uh, we want to uh, jump right into today's episode with Eric Soji, and we hope that you enjoy it as much as we did. All right, we're here with Eric Soji here from my old stomping grounds, my hometown, Sacramento, California area. Eric is one of my absolute favorite. I'm allowed to have favorites, and he's one of my favorite insurance agents in the world. Um, he's just if you know if you know Eric, you just know that he's he's a he's a great guy to be around. Fun, got a great sense of humor, but he's also a really good agency owner. And I don't think enough people know uh, about Eric. Um, Eric, I gotta say first off, your shirt is probably one of the better shirts I've ever seen on the better. Yeah, I've been definitely a better a, shirt. A nice dresser. So I think we're all, uh, yeah, we're all matching here, which is, I guess, somewhat embarrassing, but also somewhat fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with fantastic. Yeah. Um, Eric, a question for you. So yes. you've been in the business now for, for a while. You've got an agency yes. of a relatively, 
I would say you, you might modestly say a decent size. Yeah. Uh, you've got well over 10 employees. Uh, you've, yep. I think you have multiple locations, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, you know, you're not, you're not the, uh, the solopreneur by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, you guys have had a, uh, you've tasted from the, from the fruit of success. You've seen that it was good and you want more, but there was a time in your agency life, in your career where there was an obstacle. There was something that was in the way that was preventing you from getting to the place that you are now, or at least on the, on the path to where you're at now yeah. or, or where you're going. Can you talk a little bit about what that was for you? Cause I think it's, there's a lot of agents who might be listening or watching. They'll say, yeah, I can resonate completely with that. Or there's some agents who are going, I better avoid that. Yeah. Uh, t talk to us about a time where you, there was an obstacle that you had to overcome in your agency life. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, and th thank you for the introduction. I, I speak, I think highly of you as well, Nick. So it's, uh, I'm glad to be here and press and enjoy you as well and all the success you guys are having. Um, but yeah, no, for me, you know, when I'm, when I'm working or building my business, I'm always like most people trying to think not only today, but steps ahead, you know, years out as well. Uh, so for us, we have been on a really good run. Let's even say the last four or five years of some tremendous year over year growth. Um, and really the growth is what became the problem because relatively quickly, I realized the way we were doing business, which I would have classified probably more old fashioned, old school, work hard and just, you know, work harder, more hours and just try to make things happen. Um, wasn't going to work where I saw our agency, the direction we were moving and really the growth numbers we were hitting. Um, it just wasn't a scalable model. Um, and ultimately I knew, which was my biggest concern, is I was gonna burn out my team. You know, my, I have a very talented team um, in our agency. Um, we, I work with some really, really good people, but I'm always concerned and always monitoring, you know. Sure. As we're growing decisions I make, it all ultimately affects them and their workflows and, and, and burning them out was a major concern, which, you know, I think I started to do a couple of times. Um, so what I realized was I needed to reevaluate my system the way we do it, and then, you know, the old saying, work smarter, not harder in some cases, where I think for a while we were doing it, you know, the, the flip model, and, uh, and just, trying to, just trying to grind it out hard nose, you know, smash mouth type growth, and, and I realized, okay, I got to start, step, step back, take advantage of the technology that's out there, um, some tools out there, and, and really start learning what other agencies are doing, because, you know, in our, in our groups, there's a lot of talented agency owners all around the country, um, and what's nice is, you know, most of them are very willing to, to share, pull the curtain back and show you what they're doing in their agency. And there's a lot of people doing some really slick, slick things that are uh, phenomenal when it comes to scaling. So that's really what I've been doing for probably the last 12 or 14 months was just researching and trying to find the best ways, the best models that we can continue to grow at the rate or even more, um, but also not burn out my team and, and, and really have an incredible client experience. So really trying to tackle all that. So that was our problem, which is growth. Growth is our problem, which sounds funny to some people, but it was becoming a real big problem for us. Mm. You know, you have a saying that you use a lot and you kind of yes, have do. like, you have like, a, you, if you see photos of Eric online, he kind of gives this son of Zeus pose. Yes. Um, and he has, <laughs> yes, that pose, if you're watching, <laughs> yes. I call it the son of Zeus pose. Okay, I like that. Um, but you have you have a you have a saying that is all over the place in everything you do. It's it's the name of your podcast. It's in your office. It's in your email signature. It's it's everything. It's kind of yep. it's really become kind of this mantra for you, not just as an agency owner, but I think as a person. And that is refuse to be average. Correct. Right. Where does that come from? And what does that what does that mean to you? Refuse to be average. Yeah. So I mean, what happened was this is probably three three years ago is when we really adopted it you know, we were ending a year strong and it was, it became a rally cry for our agency. So it was something we, you know, brought up in a meeting and came about in a meeting and, and uh, you know, the team really rallied around it. Um, and it just, it really became part of our agency's DNA and our company's culture. Um, so anyone that we hire in, um, it, you know, ha has to follow really that, that, that I ideology is look, we don't want to be an average agency. We don't want the clients to have an average experience with us. Um, you know, we're going to refuse it. We're going to look at it in everything we do, but also, you know, because we carry that, that mantra or that rally cry, um, or that mindset really is what it is. Um, it also, you know, you push yourself at a higher level than where maybe someone else wouldn't, cause you're not going to settle. So just good enough, isn't good enough. It actually stresses us out in our agency. So, 
you know, couple that with like I was talking about the growth and all that, it was really wearing on our team because, you know, they want to be exceptional. And when things were slipping and they're not getting back to people in the, the, the timely manner that we've kind of come to expect in our agency, um, you know, they, they start to wear it as well and, and started to really take it home with them weekends. I mean, I had many discussions with them and I, you know, I saw, I saw the problem getting bigger and bigger on the horizon. So yeah, that's where that refuse to be average came from. I love that. I think that that's a really good mindset to have. I think that that's something that, uh, um, you know, Nick and I and, and, and all of us here um, embody on our own, but you, you really gave it a name. You gave it a face. I think that's really cool. And to be able to have that as your, as your team culture, um, you know, that's one of the things is bigger isn't always better. You know what I mean? Like right. it's uh, um, cause you add, you, you know, the, the bigger it gets, it's like, it sounds good on paper, but it also adds a layer of complexity to, to running a business. And yep. uh, you know, when you have people and everybody on your team has to look through their life of the lens of, am I, am I refusing to be average? Mm-hmm. You know, if we, if, if everybody asks themselves that question in everything that they do and they were honest we would probably be average 80, you know, you're, oh, most people, yeah. uh, you know, we settle way too much in life. And, I, and right. I think that that's a phenomenal mindset to go into anything with is just, you know, take no prisoners, burn your boats. Let's take it. You know, right. I, I love exactly that. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's, that's exactly what it has. It was just, it's adopted and everyone's ran with it in our agency and, 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 and Nick's right. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of our fabric. It's part of our marketing now. Um, you know, our referral partners and business associates and clients and people in the community, um, they know it now. So it's just it's something that, that we, we have fun with and, and, uh, and really got to kind of spread that message. Eric, I want to go back to something you had talked about a little bit ago. You had talked about growth was the problem. Yeah. And I, and I think when people hear that, they go, what? What's he no, talking yeah. about? That's not a common statement. Yeah, growth is the problem. Give me all the growth I can get. Yeah, they're like, I want your problems, bro. Well, here, yeah, I mean, <laughs> when, I, when I say that is, you know, when you're running an agency or any business, you know, profitability is, is the key figure, right? And growth and profitability usually don't go hand in hand. Actually, sure. usually it's opposite. You know, growth can be expensive at times. Yeah. So, um, you know, and from a scalable side, the way we were doing it is trying to, you know, do the hard nose. So, we would hire more people. Overhead was getting more. You know, I, you know, I, had, I had basically almost a full-time person that was calling clients on their birthdays and sending birthday cards. You know, it's something that you could start looking at technology that I was using a lot of man hours for, yeah. are, are pushing off on a lot of team members to do. Um, that was, it was just becoming more and more of a scalable problem. And it was a snowball that I, I saw on the horizon because our growth just continued. And like I said, it was just, you know, it's, uh, it became a, it just became more and more scary as we were going. And I just knew, I knew it couldn't go on the path we were going. What was the moment that you had where you said, uh, danger, Will Robinson, danger, like I've got to fix this. What was the light bulb moment or that epiphany that said, okay, we've identified the problem. We know what it is. We know this isn't in alignment with where we want to go and how we want to get there. So we need to fix the problem. What was that moment like for you? And, and, and can you take us through kind of that, that journey uh, mentally and, and physically that yeah. led you to kind of wanting to solve that problem. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really last year's really where, where it became so evident to us. Um, we were sitting in a team meeting and we were addressing workloads. Um, this was, you know, the same week that I've had two one-on-one meetings with some of my team members. Um, they were really overwhelmed, really burnt out. Um, and they, these are some of my absolute key people that, you know, we call, we call our team a family. So these are people I love. And I'm, I'm watching that I've created this environment that they're not having fun in. You know, they're, they're not having fun in and mm-hmm. it's, it's wearing on them. It's affecting their home life. Um, and we just hired someone that we thought was going to resolve a lot of it. But what we did is we just plugged them into our same methods, our same systems. And it just seemed like the work just kind of filled there. And now everyone was still, you know, the same level of busyness and all of that. So what it made me realize was I had to take a step back and go, we need to fundamentally start changing the way that we're going to be doing businesses from a process standpoint, start utilizing technology and automation. Um, and for me, that was a scary moment because like I said, I'm more old school. I'm not, I'm not the tech guys like, you know, both of you guys are. So, and you and I have had Nick many conversations on this, you know, some of the stuff I just don't easily grasp or I don't fully trust. You know, when I was, mm-hmm. when I was thinking about it, it, it probably comes down to, it scares me turning on a switch and, 
and having automation go to my client base, that's my baby, it's a scary feeling, right? So there's that whole trust you're, issue. You're kind of like the helicopter agency owner, like. Yeah, yeah. just up there. So well, just, yeah, so for me, I had to take a step back and, and really address some things with the way that I grow, grow our agency, what I'm doing, but then our, our team systems and, and all the above and the way we're gonna be able to move. So it was, it was last year and, uh, and I just realized that I've gotta get serious with this because the year before I was kind of playing around looking at technology, spent a lot of money buying different systems that I would never use uh, because a lot of them were just, for me, too complicated. Or I just didn't have the time or dedication. I mean, whatever the excuses, you know, I could throw a thousand excuses of why, but basically uh, I wasn't moving the needle to do it sure. or, or committing the time to do it. And it was about a year ago where I finally went, okay, if I don't do this, either we've hit our glass ceiling or I'm going to lose some very important people in my agency. Well, you mentioned... Um, uh you mentioned one thing in there too, Eric, uh, you, you had said you, you had hired another person to essentially help the other people, but then it all kind of like, it, it just yeah. seemed the workload continue to progress. And I think that's kind of a testament to Parkinson's law, which is something that we all experience where, you know, uh, work expands to meet the, the available time to complete right. the task. Right. And it's yep. like adding another person without proper systemization and, and procedures and structure not saying that you don't have that in your agency, but you get to a point where more people does not uh, does not equate directly or corollary to more production in a linear right. fashion, right? It's like you get to that law of diminishing returns where now it's just, you know, more people start to spread the work evenly. And that's kind of nice, but it's it's not getting done any faster and we're not producing any more. You know? Exactly right. That's what I was talking about, that profitability and growth issue. Right. And you're exactly right. I just saw overhead ratcheting, ratcheting up. And for me, I, I saw no end to it. So the way I was doing it, we, we've already kind of real, I mean, probably started hitting our, our glass ceiling. And, you know, I knew I had some things in the works um, this year with some, some people that were going to be coming on board that was going to greatly enhance our exposure, our growth even to another level. So basically I had that, that red alert moment that, okay, I got to dial this in. Um, and ultimately, like I said, it, it got me on an airplane down to Phoenix and I knew that, you know, I had a, a ticking, you know, I had a, a notch on the calendar that I had to get this thing rocking and rolling. You, uh, you refused to be average. I refused to be average at that moment. <laughs> yeah. That That's was great. Time. We had to do it. He, yeah. he, refu he refused, uh, here's a better way to put it. He refused to watch some training videos and he's like, screw it. I'm just going to fly down to yep. Phoenix and, and have yeah. him uh, help me do it. Yep. Nothing, av nothing I, I average all, about that. Yeah. All hands on. I just knew myself is what I did. I knew myself and I knew that I needed to just completely isolate myself and give myself two days in a hotel to really grasp uh, the concepts and, tr and really trust the system. So yeah. is that how you fix it? Is that how you feel like you've, you're solving the problem? Is it, it's just a matter of taking the knowledge that you have and taking the, uh, and combining that with the drive that you already have inside of you to just make it happen? I mean, how, how are you kind of driving the bus now to, to solve these problems? Uh, yeah, so we, so what we're doing is we're starting to use uh, like more of the sales pipelines because before like our systems worked independently for each agent in our office, mm. but it wasn't more of like a collaborative effort. So it wasn't scalable. It was only as good as the individual agents that were working it. And when we started getting the volume we were getting, you know, I couldn't pivot between our, you know, five or six agents. It was hard for them to all communicate under one, one ceiling. Um, yeah and be able to offload and, and handle tasks depending on each individual's workload. Uh, so one of the huge things was, was really just integrate the whole sales pipeline for us. Mm -hmm. um, and now like I have someone starting in two weeks, that's going to be, you know, basically managing that pipeline and doing a lot of front end loading in our, in our, um, in our competitive rater. That's going to be prepping quotes basically for our agents to finalize and send out. So we've actually evaluated that. We think that's going to really speed up our, our turnaround times. Um, our quote volume and, and ultimately our buying and sell volume. Cause I want to keep, I want to get my agents more on the phone, selling and closing the business Absolutely. and start and start offloading some of the, you know, uh, more entry level tasks. And now we can do that with a sales pipeline where before it was just, it would have been too messy to try to do it. So. Sure. How is better agency kind of fit inside of that to help you solve that problem? How is, how is it kind of that missing link to kind of being, being kind of the bridge between, you know, what you're trying to do and kind of the rate at which you guys are trying to do. How, how has it helped in that regard? Yeah. So well, better agency, uh, one, just the ease of use was a big thing for me, but, but the fact that I could have our, our sales pipeline on there, but then also we, we have for the first time really a, a, a true service pipeline as well. Cause I had multiple, you know, CSRs as well. Um, so we're kind of mirroring what we're doing on the sales side somewhat on the service side as well. So we have that all under one roof. And then now, 
you know, we're integrating some of the, the, the pipeline campaigns and, and integrations there, which is just going to help our agents communicate better, right? Communicate better, uh, be more um, open on the process to our client base and referral partners. And ultimately, I know our closing ratio is going to go up from that too, but just really, it's really going to be a volume game. But the sales pipeline within better agencies is really the big part for us on that. Um, but then, you know, luckily, you know, our, our agency management system is Hawksoft. So, you know, the fact that Better Agency rolled out an integration with Hawksoft, I just, you know, I got really lucky that that was the one we were using mm -hmm. um, because that just made our job a lot easier sure. being able to communicate with a system that we have been using efficiently for years. So um, that, was, that was a big deal for us this year too when that integration came about. Yeah. What does life look like, do you think, for you uh, in your agency as you guys are starting to, you guys are really trying to put the gas, you know, put your foot on the gas and you're trying to scale. Mm -hmm. You're trying to do so in a way that is proper. Um, I, I think we, we kind of hit on this a little bit, but you've got to scale properly. You just, yeah. you, you can't build your house on sand. You know, you right. got, you got to put a foundation down you got to put, you know, there's, there's a process involved. You know, when you look at where things are going at in the next couple of years with, you know, your insurance agency, where do you kind of see it, you know, based on the, on the trajectory that you guys have? I know you guys have made some, some really good hires, some really strategic hires Correct. Uh, with people that you really feel are going to be a really solid benefit to your agency. Where do you kind of envision the agency going forward? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, for us, it, it is going to be completely built around systems, processes, and, and technology, which, which I would say we had systems and processes that were, like I said, old school, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, before that worked on a smaller scale. Um, but for us, it's just like you said, that the foundations where it's really, really, we spent this last year building. Um, and from, from my standpoint, it's not a fear now. It's more of a, I come from a place of hope and excitement because it's, it, it's already to see the workload. You know, we brought on someone at the beginning of, of July that is going to significantly increase uh, our opportunities in production. Um, so we've already seen that workload start kicking in and our team is handling it substantially better because we're having the processes. It's, it's visible for the whole team. And what it's done is it's brought us closer together now because as, as a sales team, we can all see everyone's workload. We can pull stuff, we can offload stuff or, you know, depending on people's times. And ultimately it just keeps, keeps the line moving for, for our systems, our processes and, and really our client experience because now <laughs> we're back to the turnaround times where we really like to be. Yeah. In, in, uh, I, I know that you're using the, the pipeline stages, right. Between Hawksoft and better agency. I, uh, one of my questions is, uh, from a time perspective, you know, you have a team and, and time is money. Um, well, time's more important than money. Um, especially at, at this point. And, uh, I'd imagine that before using better agency, you guys were spending a lot of time on the messaging, uh, texting, emailing, trying to chase new prospects. How, how substantial has the pre-created campaigns that are in the sales pipeline throughout the different stages of the sales relationship? How, how much time do you feel like that saves you guys, uh, you know, on a regular basis? Well, I think it's good. Yeah. It's going to save us. Uh, well, it is going to save us a tremendous amount of time because before you're exactly right. We had a system where, I basically had, you know, triggers on suspenses in our, in our management system, which isn't as fluid or set up as nice as the, the pipeline, um, that they would, they would have, you know, emails and calls that they would send out. It wasn't automated, so it was all manual. So if you could imagine, they had to use their brain power to, to remember to do all that on a daily basis, where everything's at, and we didn't really have a true sales pipeline per se. Um, so from that standpoint now, we know that it's already taking place, it's getting done, and then we're still flagging our phone calls. But a lot of times, you know, we're proactive now where the clients are reaching out to us rather than us chasing them down because right. we're already having communication go to them and they're firing back when they're ready to move. And it's just, it's really just making the process substantially easier for us. That's awesome. Yeah, I can imagine. It seems like that would take up at scale. I haven't managed a team of 10 before, but I'd imagine if when you start to add up, you know, the amount of texts and emails that, and phone calls that a sales process really requires to facilitate a, a, a good conversion rate and a healthy amount of sales coming in times that by 10. Uh, I'd imagine that, you know, you're talking th thousands of hours a year, you know? Yeah, that. I had, yeah, I had two, two of my producers actually 
hinted or somewhat asked if I could hire them individual assistants just to help them with all of that. Wow. This is before we rolled this out. So that's how much time it was taking off their plate that was stressing them out that felt like it was taking away from what they're best at is selling, closing deals, placing coverage, you know, right. in, in our area also, like with a high fire home insurance, you know, some of these things, there's a lot, lot that goes into it. It was taking them all away from that and messing up their, their flow, if you will. So right. they, you know, they were at the point where they wanted full-time assistance to try to help them with that. So, Jeez. and you know, this automation and integration, like you said, this app, this, you know, stages for us is almost like having assistance for everyone in my office now at this point. That's cool. I mean, it's really what it, I mean, it's really kind of the equivalent is everyone has now their own assistant with everything they're working with. Love it. Nice. So I want to, I want to go back here and I want, cause I think there are going to be people who are listening to this or watching this who were exactly where you were at not that long ago. Sure. 12 to 24 months ago, there were agents who were hesitant. I don't, I don't, I won't say the word fearful because I, I think it's too strong of a word, but they're hesitant towards using technology, mm-hmm. hesitant towards uh, doing the things necessary in order to grow. Maybe, maybe if they were really being honest with themselves, they're settling for average. Yeah. Right. Talk to that agency owner. Talk to that person who is exactly where you were at before the light switch goes off in your head. It says, no, we're, we're, we are not refusing to be average. I'm going to see if I can get my chest as big as Nick's chest. Well done, by the way. Yeah. Um, you're almost there. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, talk to that agency owner. And, 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 and what would you say to that person? Yeah, I would just say, I mean, for, for them, they seem to t- take a step back, completely have a, a shift in their mindset and understand the power that these tools can have. Um, the way it enhances the client experience, I don't care how good of a team you have or how good of a salesperson you are, you cannot compete with having these tools and the technology in place. It's just, there's, right. there's no way around it. And like I, I, I say that with, I have some of the best salespeople on my team, hands down in the area. So I say that, you know, wholeheartedly is, you know, the, the shift has to come, especially if you're wanting to scale and grow at even small capacities, really, because um, it's going to catch up to you. Um, and really, with the market shifting and more and more agencies and companies implementing technology, it's going to be a client expectation. So really, if you're not, you're going to be that much even more exposed in the long run, in my opinion. But that, that's, that's, that's one of the conversations, but really just from the client experience and your team experience it is second to none being able to integrate a lot of these systems into play. Yeah. So that's really where it comes. You have to step back and realize what's most important to you. And if it is client experience, not being average and taking care of your team, it's a no brainer. If it's not being average, if you want to be average, we well, can yeah. continue to stay in the yeah, same. If you want to be average, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you just want to, if you just want to <laughs> suck. No. <laughs> yeah. But I think if you're, if you're not wanting to grow and all that, you're probably, or not wanting to get better, you know, you might probably not look for any new systems and you're just going to stay in your little bubble and <clears throat> manage whatever book you have. And, and there are agents that do that. I mean, there's a lot of agents in our industry that do that. Yeah. Just try there's to also, ride the sunset over time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know, you know, there, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of good talented agents around the country that are going to go take that business in. So, you know, real, so really from that standpoint is if, if you want to be in, in this industry and relevant long-term um, you've got to start looking at this and, you know, I was one of those, those people. And it, it did take me longer than most. And I will say that. And, you know, I'll fall on the sword and say, uh, yeah, I, it, mine just came down to a probably scared and trust issue, really. of just, man, I knew I had to fundamentally change the way I was doing business. And it was a scary, scary thing to think. But, but ultimately, I'm sitting here, you know, after the last six to 12 months of, of reworking a lot of it. And like I you know, this week, we celebrated just a lot of hope. And we're, we're cranking out more quotes than we ever have right now. And our team's you know, yeah. in a great mood and happy. And uh, it's exciting. It's you can't exciting ask for much more than that. Exactly. You What's can't that? Ask for much more. You, you he, can't ask for much more than that. You cannot. I agree. He's Eric awesome. Soji. He is in Sacramento. He is awesome. And if people want to find, find you more and fi- find you, Eric, and, and reach out to you if they have any questions or they just want to, they want to see what it's like to, to not be average themselves, where can they reach you? Yeah, no, I'm, a, I'm an open book. So if anyone would like to just, Call and chat with me. I would be more than happy to do that. Uh, I own Sky Insurance Brokers out of Sacramento. Um, so you can look us up on, on the web there. Uh, you know, our phone number is 916-540-7000. Or you can just email me or look me up on Facebook. But my email is Eric with a K. So E-R-I-K. I'm a like Viking. a Viking. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like a Viking. At skyinsurancegroup.com. 
Thanks, Eric. Thanks so much for the hey, time. Thank you for having me. Appreciate fellas. you. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. I really do. Awesome.